I'm afraid of children my own age. They kill each other. Did it always used to be that way? My uncle says no. Six of my friends have been shot in the last year alone. Ten of them died in car wrecks. I'm afraid of them and they don't like me because I'm afraid. This book is absolutely marvelous. Ten out of ten. Hello my dear friends, how are you doing? Welcome to Let's Kiki. Today I'm going to be reviewing this wonderful dystopian novel called Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Let me start off by saying that I love this book. I would give it 10 out of 10. And I finished it pretty quickly, but it was really strange because afterwards I felt the need to take some time to process it. So I didn't want to make this video right away, I just wanted to, you know, absorb it, to think about it, connect points, and then make this video. So today I will also be mentioning this book I read uh, a few years ago by Giovanni Sartori called Homo Fidens. And he's a teacher at the University of Florence and he also writes for a very uh, famous Italian newspaper. So. I will be talking about this book as well, but let me tell you what this book is about. So it's a uh, dystopian uh, book, that is to say, um, it is set in a world where basically everything is as bad as it can be, and reading books is forbidden, and firemen uh, burn books instead of saving people from fires. So reading is forbidden because reading is dangerous. Books are dangerous, literature is dangerous because it makes you think, it makes you feel confused and doubtful. And so they decided to burn all the books altogether, all the classic Shakespeare, Cervantes, Plato, everything burned to ashes. So that's a very peculiar choice and I believe it talks about our modern society and what we are doing with books and literature because we don't read as much as we did before and that's why I wanted to quote this book because um, Giovanni Sartori explains how basically watching something isn't the same thing as reading something. For example, if you saw an image, the image would get straight to you but if you read the same image in a text, it would take you more effort to just process it and to imagine it. You need to use your symbolic capacity, your symbolic ability. So we, human beings, are very symbolic. We are symbolic animals. We basically think through symbols. So for example, me saying that this, this novel talks about our society is associating this with that. I'm using my symbolic ability, my symbolic capacities, to associate one thing with the other. So basically Sartori says that the television and the new technologies are distracting us from, you know, reading and from acknowledging that we are here in this very moment. I'm going to talk about that in a second. So in this um, dystopian reality, basically Reading books is very dangerous, that's why they want to burn it. But the main fireman, the, the antagonist in this novel, is a person who knows books by heart. So he's the one who suffered the most because of books. And I don't want to spoil anything for you, you need to read the book to know what happens in the story. But I think it's very important that the main, you know, the main enemy of books was the one who suffered the most it seems, because of them. But the question is, do books make us suffer or do they open our eyes to a certain reality that we don't want to acknowledge? Because according to Sartori, basically what we do with books is when we read, we understand that we are finite beings, that we're not going to be here forever and we are forced to think. Whereas with the television, we are not forced to think at all. Actually, television wants to um, basically make us forget that we are here and, and now. And, and basically, we feel safer because we don't think of our condition of human beings. Another thing Sartori says about our society and, and the television is that um, 
when we read books, we want to be the Superman, we want to be the hero. You know, we read all the classics and we, we just want to be the hero. But with the television, the, su the Superman, the superhero, has been replaced by the everyman. The man who isn't special. The man who knows that he doesn't know and he doesn't want to know. He doesn't want to do anything about it. So he doesn't make anyone feel uncomfortable about their lack of knowledge. He isn't a hero and he doesn't want to do really anything about it. And I think this is one of the books I enjoyed the most a few years ago and it made me, um, it made me think so much. And, and I wrote a very big text here. It's like an essay on it. And I called it the uh, so-called mental superiority of the beings who haven't been contaminated by the symbolic ability. And here I talked about, you know, the television and and how it affected us. What's the difference between the image and the, the written text? And I talked about philosophers and, and, and other things. And I just, I found this today and I just love it. I love it and I love the fact that this book made me think of what I had written years ago. And I remember that when I wrote this I was just starting to make videos on Hermetic Kitten and I remember writing poems and wanting to read them out loud and songs in my videos because I wanted to put something deep and meaningful and present into it. And I think, I really think this book really influenced me in so many ways and I love the fact that Fahrenheit 451 made me think of this book and I picked it up again and I found all the material um, I was working on uh, years ago. And this book also uh, made me remember another dystopian novel by George Orwell called 1984, which was written in 1948 if I remember correctly. but. Um, in that novel, basically, they talked about the Big Brother, and it's quite a paradox that the Big Brother became one of the, the main TV shows in the 90s, at least in Italy. I don't know if in England and in, in the United States, but here it was so popular, and basically television was constantly watching you. And I thought, you know, George Orwell wanted us to, to think about these topics, and the television used that term to create basically the most popular TV show where people are, you know, closed, locked up inside a house and people can watch them 24-7. And I love Ray Bradbury's style. I think it's so elegant and, and graceful. And I love his comparisons. For example, a fair skin becomes, I don't know, a skin touched or kissed by the moonlight. And I, I just love how he does it. And I think not only this book is very smart and very special and original and visionary too, I also think that it's very gracefully written, so I wouldn't ask more for a novel. And I must admit that after The Catcher in the Rye, which I like so much, I was very skeptical of the next book. And I picked this up and the style was so different and I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like it. But then I kept reading and I was absolutely surprised and, and I was mesmerized by this book. I, I really was. Um, and then after this book I picked up All the Bright Places which I showed you last time. And you know after reading two very important classic books such as Fahrenheit 451 and Catcher in the Rye I picked up All the Bright Places which is a young adult um, novel and I was reading things such as she looked at me or he looked at me he smirked and I was like oh no gosh please no and I just had to close it and I started another book uh, I'm going to pick up all the bright places later on but I think it wasn't the right choice after two books so meaningful so so special such as these ones and um, I picked up um, the perks of being a wallflower and I, I'm just loving it and I I find so much of Catcher in the Rye in it I'm going to tell you next time but yeah so thank you so much for all the book recommendations I didn't have time to reply to every single comment but I will soon uh, I'll try my best and I just love seeing all the recommendations and all the people who joined the book marathon and it is not about reading books fast or quickly or rushing it. It's more about finding a little bit of time every day to read books. And 
believe me, just the fact that I consciously decided, you know, I'm going to find time for reading, even if it's just five minutes on the train or in the cafeteria, it made all the difference for me and I am so passionate about books and somehow I had forgotten how much I love reading books and how much I enjoy, I generally enjoy it and it's so strange because I've, I've enjoyed reading all my life and somehow I, I feel awakened right now and I feel like I'm truly truly enjoying literature as I wanted to enjoy it and it's like reading for the first time, it's, it's very it's really wonderful it's really wonderful and so yeah I really hope you enjoyed this review and please tell me if you read this book and what you think about it because with Catcher in the Rye some people contacted me and said you know what I started but it's boring or I started it but and I finished it but I can't find the meaning I don't understand why it's such a popular book and I truly and generally understand why some people think it's not you know, the best book they've ever read. And I think the perspective changes based on who you are and what's what's happening in your life and what happened in your life, what took place in your life. And also, um, depending on, on what you're looking for in a book. With Catcher in the Rye, I, I truly, truly identified with Holden. I, I really liked the way he spoke. I love following and being part of his stream of consciousness for three days. And I also think that adolescence is its just like that. Nothing truly happens, but everything happens at once. So I, I believe if you didn't like that book, maybe you should read it in a few years and see what you get from it. Or maybe it wasn't for you and, and it's totally understandable. It really depends on what you're looking for in a book. And I might like it, but you might not like it. And maybe to me is the best book I've ever read, or for you is the worst you've ever read. It's totally okay with literature. And same thing applies to Fahrenheit 451. I liked it so much, but maybe someone else would find it boring or too detailed or uh, unbelievable, unrealistic. I find it very realistic. In fact, I think we live in a society that where basically everything is Precisely as he said, even though we don't burn books, but sometimes we actually do without realizing it. And there is a passage I wanted to read. Let, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so I couldn't find it in the book, but the exact passage, I, I knew it was at the beginning, but I found it on the internet. I'm going to read it to you. You can't really guess anything from this bit, but I think it's so meaningful. There is a character um, who says to the protagonist, I'm afraid of children my own age. They kill each other. Did it always used to be that way? My uncle says no. Six of my friends have been shot in the last year alone. 10 of them died in car wrecks. I'm afraid of them and they don't like me because I'm afraid. My uncle says his grandfather remembered when children don't, didn't kill each other. But that was a long time ago when they had things different. So this was written in 1953. And there is also uh, more about the, in this chapter. When you read the book, you'll see it. That is so visionary. And I think if schools had read this chapter, they would have done things a lot differently. And it said that basically with all the classes and everything, you don't have time to truly bond with your, your, um, with people your age, with your friends. You don't really know each other. You just want to compete and you just want to, to do your own thing. And when you get home, you're so tired that you can't even have a social life. And she talks about this and, and I think it's so accurate. And it, it was written in the 50s, so that, that's quite amazing to me. It's, that's why I, I call it a visionary novel. So I love that passage, and I, I really, truly really love this that book. you will love Ray Bradbury's style and, and the, the entire novel. Please let me know if you decide to read it or if you've read it already. Uh, it's, I think, 158 pages, yes. And... Yeah, let me know what you're reading right now and what are the next books you're going to read. If you want to join the marathon, I actually bought a special, special book called So Many Books 
so little time and I'm basically um, writing my impressions on the books I'm reading because I don't want to forget and maybe when I'm done with you know the first five books maybe I will share my notes with you let me know if you want that but if you want to join the marathon the only thing you need to do is create a list this is not accurate anymore because I'm going to remove uh, one of them I think and add another because one thing I, I noticed is that when you read a very good book you just want to read more from the same author and someone uh, recommended the Martians Chronicles so I have to look for that book uh, by Ray Bradbury but if you have another uh, book or dystopian novel you want to recommend please tell me because I really enjoy dystopian novels so basically to join the marathon you just need to make a list of books you want to read over the spring and you don't need to finish the list and you can even you know include three books and rent them from the library you don't need to buy them or anything um, but the um, basically the challenge is finding time to read every day even just five minutes before going to bed or when you're in the um, the train on the train or in a cafeteria just read whenever you want when you feel comfortable um, and try to stick to it to read a little bit every day even if it's just a few lines it doesn't have to be five minutes but just a bit every day and making the conscious effort to do that it's going to make the entire difference, I promise. So yeah, thank you so much for joining my marathon. I really hope you like this video. I was so, I don't know, excited because every time, a single time I talk about books, I get so excited. And it's the second time I make a review in English. So I'm getting used to it. But do let me know what you're reading and what you are going to read next. And yeah, thank you so much. And I'm giving you a virtual hug. I hope it reaches you and see you next time. Bye bye.